Are you serious? Are you serious? Well, this is very serious. Russian military planes have arrived in Venezuela, and Iran's warships may follow to support. Um, this is unbelievable, folks, but uh, we got information earlier today from word on the street that there were nuclear bombers in Venezuela. Of course, that would have to be either uh, Chinese or Russian. We assumed it was Russian, and it is. Russian nuclear bomber planes, along with uh, the Iranian warships, Russia and Iran were both set to send military forces to Venezuela in a show of support to the socialist Latin American nation of Venezuela whose embattled economy has been further damaged by more U.S. sanctions. Now, the Russian Defense Ministry announced today that two Tu-160 strategic bombers and an An-124 heavenly, excuse me, heavily military transport aircraft and an an Il-62 long-haul plane arrived at the uh, Simeon Bolivia International Airport in Caracas, Venezuela. The Venezuelan Defense Minister Vladimir Padrino said that up to 100 Russian personnel would arrive as part of the joint air exercise, according to his ministry. But Padrino said that nobody in the world should fear the presence of a Tu-160 and other Russian aircraft because we are builders of peace and not war, touting the country's bilateral ties. But there's no way the United States wants Russian nuclear bombers or nuclear subs or nuclear anything in the Western Hemisphere, period. Um, We know that it has happened. We know they've had submarines. We know they've had different uh, battleships that have gotten too close. We know this. But anyway, Petrino says this, and anyway, the air, crew, the air crew of the Russian Federation are welcome to this heroic land, says the Venezuelans, and along images of the Russian military delegation's arrival, it is a new opportunity to strengthen our relations in the military field and to continue walking a path of cooperation and sincere friendship. Peace is our objective according to the Venezuelans. Now, despite this message, the Russian defense ministry noted that at certain stages of the flight, the Tu-160 bombers were followed by F-16 fighter aircraft of the Norwegian Air Force, while the flight was, excuse me, the flight was carried out in a strict accordance with the international rules on the use of airspace, as cited by Russian state-run Sputnik News, Moscow Embassy in Washington, D.C. also affirmed that the 6,200-mile journey was undertaken in compliance with international aviation law. Norway, which is neighbors to Russia, is a founding member of the U.S.-led NATO Western Military Alliance. And like a number of countries in the region, Oslo, Norway, has expressed concern over what is viewed to be increasingly aggressive behavior from Moscow. The United States and Russia have accused one another of pursuing destabilizing foreign policies while Washington, D.C. hardens its stance toward Moscow through sanctions. The Kremlin has sought to develop new ties with fellow critics of the United States in South America, which would be Venezuela. Now, following Cuban President Miguel uh, uh, Canal visit to Moscow, that's Miguel Diaz Canal, he went to Moscow last month, a trip that inspired com- uh, comparisons to the Cold War and the Cuban Missile Crisis amid U.S. threats to scrap a nuclear missiles deal. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro traveled to the Russian capital of Moscow last week to boost that those ties and relationship. And Russian President Vladimir Putin has said to have promised both countries lucrative deals 
with Manduros claiming to walk away with up to $6 billion worth of investment. The money was direly needed desperately in Venezuela's economy and has continued to spiral downward with hyperinflation causing consumer prices to skyrocket, get this, by 833,997%. What? Are you serious? Are you seriously serious? That's insane. But that's exactly what happens when a very prosperous democratic nation is handed over to a bunch of super socialistic communists. And that's exactly what you get, a, a destruction. Manduro attempted to introduce a new currency back in August. That was a joke. But the government's attempts have so far done very little to ease the crisis that has led to massive shortages in essential goods as well as an exodus of millions of people. Meanwhile, the Trump administration has doubled down on its efforts to undermine the Venezuelan government, reportedly muling, adding it to the state sponsors of terrorism list. And Maduro has long accused the United States of preparing a coup against him, especially after he was apparently targeted in an assassination attempt using an explosive laden drone back in August. Trump would later mock the incident. Now, last week, Defense Secretary James Mad Dog Mattis said that the Venezuelan strongman must let go of his power, but it's up to the Venezuelan people and regional states and to oust Pedro Manduro. Um, his predecessor, Hugo Chavez, faced a 2002 coup that, to some degree, was tied to the United States though it was denied any direct involvement in the face of repeated Venezuelan accusations. Russia is not the only country backing Venezuela. Iran. Boy, I tell you, I wouldn't want to be hanging out with Iran, Russia, Venezuela. That's just not a good, you know, team picture. Another nation called Iran, uh, whose soured ties with the United States stem from regime change, it also offering some support. So, just like Russia and Venezuela, Iran has been the target of U.S. sanctions, and these two countries have been at odds since 1979 Islamic Revolution that ousted the pro-Western monarchy, which was uh, reinstalled by a CIA-backed coup in 1953. That was, of course, the Shah of Iran. Though relations briefly improved as they came together to sign the 2015 nuclear deal, which was a joke, Trump's decision to abandon this deal over accusations that the Islamic Republic sponsored terrorism, and they have, they're totally supporting the Houthi rebels in Yemen and Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in southern Lebanon and the Syrians in Syria. I mean, that's insane. And um, so with this decision, uh, uh, it's just crazy, okay? It's just, uh, look, I'll talk about this tonight. Don't miss tonight's live broadcast. Starts at 10 p.m. Eastern. That's 10 p.m. Eastern at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. You can watch it live on my YouTube backup channel. YouTube backup channel, which is Paul Begley Prophecy. I'll put the link in the comments to make it easy for you and be there at 10 o'clock tonight. We'll also be on a new live stream, Roku Satellite Television and uh, uh, Periscope. So don't miss it tonight. This is going to be a powerful program. This subject and uh, what's going on in France and the dedication of the stone altar by the Sanhedrins in Jerusalem the super blood moon, the, the horrific snowstorm in North Carolina, and a whole lot more. We got a lot to cover tonight. See you tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern. That's 10 p.m. Eastern at my website and everywhere else. God bless. Are you serious? Are you serious? What?